Welcome in everyone. I figured the best way to be able to talk about the new Phasmophobia update that is coming out next week, one week from today, and today is June 18th. The update is going to be encompassing a couple different things that the Phasmophobia developers have been working on. And if you're not familiar with this Trello page right here, this is where the Phasmophobia developers keep up to date with everything they've been working on. And this is public facing so every Phasmophobia player can see what is going on. So everything you can see here in this closed beta testing section this is more than likely going to be in this next update and here you have point hope the lighthouse map that has been teased for well over a year so it's going to be a new lighthouse map that is going to drop next week then we have the swap from photon voice to vivox voice chat and I know there's probably a lot of people saying, what does that even mean? I'm going to get into that in a second. Then we have the Ascension Equipment Adjustments. All of that stuff was talked about in a, a dev preview that was released earlier on this year in January. So we're going to go over that. Everything in that dev preview is going to be in the update. So that's all confirmed stuff. Now for the point hole map, I know a lot of people have been asking, how large is the map going to be and what is it going to entail? The Point Hope map is going to be a completely indoors map. There is not going to be any single ghost room or a possibility for a ghost to spawn outside. There's going to be an outside area you can walk around like every other map in Phasmophobia, any house. There's going to be like some outdoor scenery, but the ghost is only going to be able to spawn and be inside the location. Lavender also did confirm that the way up to the top of the lighthouse is very lengthy. So more than likely, this will be a large map, but not a large map with one wise large map vertical going up which is a very interesting thing to think about i mean there's a lot of things to take into consideration there how are we going to do banshee tests if there's a very small floors how are you going to get away from a ghost if you keep traveling up a staircase is there going to be capabilities for hiding and other dev previews have given us insights into what that map looks like very very minimally there's been some screenshots of what they've been working on and they have plans to make it as detailed as possible and on top of that they have plans to actually create another map, uh, not similar to Point Hope, but another new map after this new map. So their plans are they're going to make Point Hope, they're going to work on another new map, and then they're going to work on the Grafton and the Bleasdale reworks. So there's going to be this new map and then another one coming out not too far away Hopefully, I, if I had to take a guess, I would say they're trying to plan for a second new map closer to Halloween to hype people up during the game's peak. Everybody plays Phasmophobia during Halloween. That's spooky season. So that is more than likely going to be their plan if they have the opportunity to pull it off. If you have not been following the Phasmophobia development team on Twitter, in their Discord, everywhere, they have been trying their absolute best to ensure that they hire a much larger team. They have more artists now. They've taken on people for quality assurance and they're gonna be hiring a community manager as well. So all that is very important to keep into context when we're talking about all this stuff. So let's go ahead and quickly tackle this little bit about the Vivox voice chat. A lot of people have been wondering where the heck is the console update? Every, you guys talked about console being released over a year ago. Those are all valid points, and I 100% agree with every single one of you. I want to know where the console update is. So, if you go over here to the in-progress section of, and this is why I'm even on the Trello in the first place, if you click on console release, one of the big things you see here, the reason that it's not out is because they need Vivox voice chat in order to release console at all. And that's going to give them the opportunity for PC users to communicate with console users vo via voice chat. Without that, the voice chat via platform crossing does not work. So this is one step in the right direction and a mandatory thing that needs to be done. And I think that's why in their current preview, they say you should be getting more updates about the, the console update in the coming weeks because they're moving in the right direction. The next thing they're going to have to tackle is inviting players to the Steam friends list. So how they're going to be able to manage you to be able to invite somebody who's on console, that all has to be worked out with Steam. So that's all things to be taken into consideration, but I feel very confident that this console release is way closer than it's ever been before, and it's definitely got one of the two things done. So I think all of these things are going to be coming in the next update. And then all this stuff over here, if you want to check it out in your own time, this is all stuff that's coming. Horror 2.0, new content drops, 
progression overhaul, photo reworks. Photo rework is gonna be the process where you can go into your photo journal, and if you got a zero star photo, hit the delete button and take another photo. That way you don't ruin your perfect game for absolute nonsense. We've all been there, we've all done it, it sucks and hopefully it'll never happen again whenever this piece comes out. Then we have the CCTV rework, which is gonna be redoing the camera systems and everything, and so on and so forth. Character models, customizations, all that stuff is to come, hopefully at some point the rest of this year or early next year. And then they're obviously gearing up for the 1.0 release. And he was able to comment a little bit about what's going to be the reality of things after the 1.0 release. After 1.0 gets released, nothing new is going to get overhauled whatsoever. But they will still continue to make new maps and potentially new ghosts so that the game constantly stays a little bit refreshed. But if you're looking for any massive overhauls after 1.0, it's not going to happen. In fact... He even went as far as to say that they were going to be working on a different game after Phasmophobia. How you feel about that is totally your own, your own conclusion you have to draw, but there's going to be, obviously, some other game they're going to strive for. Now that they're hiring this massive team of people with a bunch of different developers, a bunch of different artists, community managers, etc., they're going to work on other games. They don't want to be that one-trick pony, I'm sure. If you're somebody who likes being creative, you're going to want to be able to take that creativity to the next level. So who knows what Phasmophobia is going to be? But I know one of the questions that caught my eye during his Q&A was, is there ever going to be a reality where the community has the opportunity to go ahead and make maps for the game? And his specific answer really was no. He kind of danced around a little bit, but it was no. And the reason for that is not really much of a surprise. If you know anything about game development, that's one of those things you have to take into consideration for the game very early on. And if you don't, there's no going back. So he said that's something they're going to consider in their next game, but it's not really worthwhile in Phasmophobia. It's not realistic, and I would tend to agree. With my, with my knowledge of game development and how it all works, I've worked in Unity, I've worked in, I've worked in Unreal Engine, it's just not realistic. So I get it. So I know a lot of people have been asking that question, and thankfully we were able to get an answer to that. Let's go ahead and switch on over now to the update that actually got released today, which is basically announcing to us that the update is coming next week. So it says say that our Twitter followers and users in Discord may have noticed that we have been expanding our company this year. So far, we've hired additional two artists and email support, a sound designer, and a quality assurance leader. Additionally, we have actively interviewing for several other roles with employees joining us throughout the year. So they have been taking, I think they're taking more of an approach the past few months of working from home, and they are working on releasing a new a new headquarters, I'm assuming. Our new office will soon be ready, and we're looking for talented and passionate people to join us in our journey. So right there. They're looking to transition back into the office. They're going through a lot of changes right now. They're hiring a lot of people. They're onboarding a lot of people. They're gaining new talent to be able to fill in the gaps that they probably have right now. And in my mind, and according to what he was saying, if you have what, so many artists, they're going to be able to push out maps faster. And so that I think that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing for this game. That's a good thing for the next game they're going to work on on being able to push out maps because it's been a stale point for this game for a long time not getting a new map since realistically sunny meadows sunny meadows was a rework of asylum then they came out with camp woodwind which is a rework of maple and then they did the maple lodge rework it's all been the same stuff they've been kind of repurposing the same map over and over again so we're looking for new maps at least i am maybe you are maybe you're not whatever have you. Then obviously they go down into the console update, which was with, this is where they go ahead and they say that they understand that everybody's disappointed about obviously the delays, but we will share more information on the development plans for the console within the next few weeks. So more than likely, like I said, since the new update is gonna be bringing the new voice system, that is one less thing that they have to worry about, then they can start figuring out, okay, how are we gonna make it so players can invite people from console and console can invite people from, from PC? Because things like, you know, I can think of one game very, very, that everybody knows. One of the games that's nailed that perfectly was Rocket League. Rocket League has the opportunity for you to play with people from, you know, whether they're on a platform or they're on a console. But the thing is, though, that's a different matchmaking experience. So this game would have to take a different approach that involves 100% Steam. So it's a little bit different there. So I don't envy them trying to take that on. I'm sure it's very challenging, but hopefully you can get it done in a reasonable time. 
And then this is where we get into the name of the, the update, which is Eventide, and which is going to be doing the adjustments to the Ascension update. All the adjustments we're going to go over here momentarily, and I hope they add some additional stuff that they haven't already teased to us, because I think there's a lot of things that need to happen. One of the things I recommended to them in their even their own Discord and their, their suggestion channel back in way back a couple months ago was that I think that new players need to have access to a crucifix or a smudge stick and lighter, one or the other. It's very hard being a new player in Phasmophobia. Hello. You don't have any defensives whatsoever. You're going into that house, you're probably dying rather quickly whenever the ghost is, whenever you're at a good enough sanity level to be able to get hunted by the ghost, and you just have no means whatsoever to protect yourself. So I think they need to start off players level one with some sort of defensive, like I said, crucifix or smudge stick tier one, one or the other, that should be base. So I hope they do that in this Ascension update where they're doing different adjustments to different how, you know, certain equipments that's are OP and certain equipments that is just, you know, the way that they get unlocked, making it a little bit more linear. I hope there's a lot that changes here. So we're going to get into everything that's going to be in the Ascent Ascension adjustments in just a moment. But other than that, this was a big thing right here. I just kind of want to touch upon the merchandise, them bringing out the monkey paw plushie. If you guys are on Twitter, I know a lot of you are. The amount of backlash I saw this thing get on that post was intense. There was so many people screaming about where the updates were, where is the content, where is all the stuff, I don't want this plushie, I want content, and I hope, I think it resonated with them, because now here we are, gonna be getting the update next week. The only thing I can hope for, though, is that nothing's gonna get rushed, I want everything to be 100% complete, and bug free if possible. Uh, they get they have to be able to test things. But yes, I do agree. An update should have come out by now. 100. percent It's taken too long. It has been so long since we gotten everything. I mean, I mean, the last thing we got was an Easter update that really didn't have anything inside of it. It was nothing new, nothing groundbreaking as far as fixes go. So there's a lot of stuff missing from that. And that is the end of this preview. They just basically talk about how it's coming next week. So it's coming on, let's see here. So real quick, we'll touch upon this as well. It's going to be available next Tuesday, June 25th. And if you're a Kinetic Games partner, which I know a lot of the people that are on my stream team, Midnight Society, they are, they will be able to stream it a day early on Monday the 24th. So if you guys want to catch it a day early, make sure you're tuning into some of your favorite Kinetic partners out there to go check out their stream on Monday. I guarantee they'll be playing it. So make sure you go check out all those wonderful, wonderful people. Okay, now, as far as what's coming in the Ascension adjustments, let's, let's go ahead now and step back in time, back in time to January 17th, 2024, which where they go ahead and they talk about what's coming in the Ascension adjustments update. And I'm very surprised that this didn't come out earlier because this was talked about so long ago, and I'm sure nobody remembers what's on this page, but... They're talking about progression. The leveling rates are currently too slow. Being able to boost the XP you get so you can level faster. That's one thing right there. So hopefully we can see an adjustment in XP so people can actually try to get to a prestige faster. There's equipment tier unlocks that are too linear and too slow. Along the progression, the rate change, changes above, we're going to change tier unlocks so that they, they uh, that multiple are unlocked at once instead of one only. So this is going to make it significantly easier for you to be able to go ahead and unlock more tiers of gear after you prestige. That way you're not sitting there unlocking one piece at a time and stuck with all tier one gear. You'll be able to unlock tier gear, tier two gear faster and get back to where you were a lot faster. And then being able to get to that next prestige without so much growing pains because let's face it when you when you go ahead and you prestige it's bittersweet because you got a new id card and it looks cool it's got some cool colors but you got zero dollars and you got no equipment and you're running back into that house with literally nothing at all and it's a slow grind back up to the 50 levels where you start unlocking tier three gear again it's just not it's not great and there's not a lot of incentives to doing it so hopefully this is going to make it a little bit better. It's going to make it so you can go ahead and get that tier gear a little bit faster. Then they're going to be increasing the cost of some of the upgrades as the, the moment players can unlock almost everything straight away when some upgrades should be something you save for. I kind of agree with that. By the time I get to the end of a prestige, I have so much extra money. I have nothing to spend it on. It doesn't make a lot of sense. I think this is going to reward a lot of players who die a little bit less and try to let people play a little bit smarter. 
instead of just going in and just dying and being like, well, it's not that big of a deal. It should be a little bit of big of a deal if you die. You should actually have to lose something in order to be able to enjoy the moments where you gain something. That's my perspective anyway. I enjoy that kind of gameplay. I don't enjoy it when it's so extreme like Demonologist where you die and you lose $3,000 in one round. That's too much. That's above and beyond. But if I lose a couple hundred bucks when I die, it's not the end of the world. I can make it work. Then we're talking about prestigings. Com prestiging are completely optional part of progression. However, we understand that there aren't many incentives right now to encourage players to prestige. With new player models, we will be adding unique prestige related unlocks for players per purchase with in-game money. All this stuff here, I don't think any of this is coming this update. From what he was saying today, this is gonna come with a customization update. So this part of this preview, just go ahead, side table that for right now. I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we're there yet. I think that's coming probably later this year, but I, I don't even know if they know when. I think it's gonna have to be on a case by case basis. And now that they have more art people to work on those new models, that'll be very exciting. And also I wanted to confirm one thing that I was terribly, I was terribly dreading. They have confirmed that the janky models, the ability for you to bend your characters back so far, it looks like they have a broken spine. By the time the game hits 1.0, that will no longer be possible. The characters janky models and their odd movements and their odd ragdoll dying patterns, all of that will be gone from the game to look more cleaned and polished in their eyes. Personally, I think that's a massive mistake because I think it takes away a lot of the charm the game had and a lot of the entertainment we got from that, but that is the direction they want to take it, so I'm just sharing with you what I know. Don't shoot the messenger, that's what he said, not me. I don't, know. I, don't know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I'm not happy about it either, trust me, but that is what their plan is. So hopefully, they hear everybody out there saying, oh no, everything like that, and they take that into consideration and they don't do it, but I don't know. You know, it's their game ultimately, so I, you know, we have to respect that, but... I really wish they would leave that in, because I know it, it doesn't look great, it doesn't look like a finished product, but it is rather funny. Like, if, I, if somebody dies and their head's through the wall, I'm, I'm dying laughing. I'm just, there's no way. I'm, I'm finding that hilarious. Here is the equipment changes that will be coming. So these were proposed, and based on what Lavender was saying, more than likely these will be confirmed. And also, Shumi in their Discord today had told everybody who was asking about what changes are to come with the Ascension adjustments, They told she told them to go ahead and refer to this post again. So if that's the case, I'm assuming this is being taken for gospel. So Dots, Tier 1, obviously it sucks, it's not powerful enough, so we'll be making it brighter and increasing the range of the light emits. So the Tier 1 Dots is going to be getting a massive boost, where it's going to be projecting more Dots and making it easier to see the Ghost, which I think is something that has been needed for a while, I think they could have taken that one step further and allowed you to attach it to a tripod. That way you can get it off the ground and you can get the full effect of the dots, but maybe that's asking a little too much. I'm, I'm happy that they're at least addressing it, the fact that Tier 1 Dots is by far my least favorite equipment in the entire game. By far. My least favorite equipment in the entire game. But actually, do you know what's a close second to my second, my least favorite equipment in the entire game? The Tier 2 Thermometer. So, so why don't we skip ahead of that with that segue? Tier 1 Thermometer ne had its randomness to the readings. It never had its randomness to the readings, making it much more accurate than other tiers. But we'll be implementing a slight fluctuation on readings to reduce its effectiveness. Tier 2 and Tier 3 Thermometer will be adjusted so that after the initial hold scan, continuing to hold the button will keep refreshing the temperature reading every second or so. Tier 3 will have its randomness reduced further to make it even better than Tier 2. This is, this is by far one of the biggest betrayals on the entire, the entire page. I, I can't use this, this metaphor enough. If you go to the doctor, right? If you go to the doctor and after COVID and everything, they always take your temperature to make sure you're not sick already. Not too sick anyway, that they have to make you wear a mask. How many times do they take your temperature before they know if you have a fever or not? They take it once, one time only. There should be one time that you need to get, there should be no randomness at all. It should all be gone. You should take the, the temperature once and it should read the accurate temperature at that moment in time without any, any like randomness at all. If they want to add the randomness to tier one, I get it. That makes sense. But if for tier three, it makes no sense at all. 
So the fact that they said it's reduced further, just get rid of it. Like, there's no randomness needed. Tier 2, add a little bit of randomness in there. I get it. It's unreliable. It's a piece of crap. Whatever have you. You can keep that in there. I'm not upset about it. But Tier 3, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. I, I, I understand that there's definitely some fluctuating needed. I just wish that something as advanced looking as the Tier 3 thermometer that has, like, that weird-looking probe thing on the side, I wish that would be a little bit more accurate. Because sometimes now, when you go ahead and you take the um, the temperature with tier 3, it's just like, at one moment, it's like you're 4 degrees Celsius, 6 degrees Celsius, 10 degrees Celsius, 3 degrees Celsius, and it's like, what's happening? Where, where is this ghost right now? And so I don't know what to do with that. I don't know what to do with that at all. So scrolling back up to EMF reader, uh, tier 1 needle often gets too close or even past the 5 mark during its, events, its uh, vents and hunts. So we'll be clamping that pesky needle down a little harder to make sure people are mistaking it for evidence. I think that's a good call. I know a lot of players, a lot of new players get their tier, five, their tier 1 EMF reader and they're like, what does EMF 5 look like? Because I just had the ghost event and it looks like it's pointing towards 5 but it's going back towards four. And a lot of them don't realize that if it's going a little bit past the number, it means it's the number before it. If it's going a little bit before that number, it's the, you know, it's, it's the number before that one. So, you know, in order to get a proper EMF five, it needs to be beyond the five, almost like it's going off the grid or else it's an EMF four. So I think they need to be able to clamp that down for new players. I think that's a great call. T3 will receive a new sound for an EMF five reading, making it easier for evidence without having to pick it up. I don't know how needed that really was. I know I personally have gotten more used to the sound of T3 EMF five. I know what that sounds like now. And if they change it, I'm gonna be a little confused, but I know some people out there are having a hard time identifying EMF five sounds with the tier three EMF. So. If that is the case and it's going to help people out, by all means, do it. If it's going to help a majority of the players out there, I am all for it 100%. We'll be, additionally, we'll be changing where the T3 sensor reads from the for, from four PC players. This will make the directional indicator more accurate and feel more intuitive to read. Sometimes you get like an EMF reading on the EMF tier 3, and it says it's in a certain direction with the arrow, and then you go that way, and then it turns around again. And you're like, well, I don't know where it is. So sometimes you have a hard time finding it, especially if it's through the wall. Um, so if they can try to make it so it's more directional and it's more accurate on what direction it's coming from, that's great too. So that is going to sum up dots, EMF, and thermometer. Again, I'm pretty happy with dots. I'm pretty happy with EMF thermometer. I'm going to have to see that in practice, but right now I'm a little upset about it. Ultraviolet. We'll be flipping T1 and T2 around so that players start with a flashlight and unlock the glow stick second. This should feel more like a progression than it currently is. This doesn't make any sense either. Why would the T1 UV be an electronic item and not a glow stick? Like, the whole point of Tier 1 is you have, like, crappy equipment. You're roughing it. You, got, you don't have a lot. So a glow stick just kind of makes sense. You bought that from the dollar store or Party City or something. But now you're going to have a T2 flashlight. This seems like lazy development to me. This seems like they just said to themselves, well, we're not going to increase the brightness of tier two. So we're just going to swap them and that'll do it. Like, I hope they don't do this. I hope this doesn't come to pass because this just doesn't make any sense in my mind. And I've talked to a couple people about this. And they're like, bro, Tater, you're overreacting. If I'm overreacting, then by all means, tell me in the comment section. But this doesn't seem to make any sense. I don't know. Like, I just can't imagine being like, oh, tier two UV. Here's my glow stick. Well, meanwhile, I have like, you know, all this other electronic items and like a digital camera and everything they're going to do. They should just make a glow stick, a lamp or something. Yeah, make it more than just a glow stick. Make it something better, something more appealing to the eye. I agree. Trooper, I was watching this morning, pointed out that you go from being able to, use, to find UV from across the room to having to walk up to them. Yeah, the fact that you have that narrow spec, like that narrow scope, that narrow cone that the tier two UV gives, that doesn't make any sense. But I still feel like they should probably change the model then so that it's not just a glow stick, it's something more advanced. That way I don't feel like I'm getting robbed. There's a lot of benefits to glow stick and there's no doubt that they're definitely one of the strongest items in the entire game. I think it kind of like begs the question, is it, is it even stronger than the tier three UV? Because if it is, then this change doesn't do anything at all. And I hope that they don't reduce the light that comes off of the glow stick because that would really suck.
That would really suck. My idea is that they're going to take the glow stick and they're going to reduce the light that it gives off so that it's not as desirable as it was before. And I would be a massive disservice to everybody who is team glow stick out there, which a lot of people, which a lot of people definitely feel like T1 glow stick has an advantage for taking picks since you can get just toss on the floor. Yeah, if you're going to get UV footprints, T1 glow stick is the go 100%. No questions. All right, let's go ahead and go on to the next thing. Fire lights and igniters will be increasing the duration and light range for all tiers, giving players new ways to walk around in dark areas. This was 100% needed. I like the light that's given off of the lantern. The light that's given off of the tier two fire starters is very lackluster. And I almost don't even use it other than to test for an Onrio or to get my objective done. So this is cool. I like the idea of having more light. It doesn't really bring back the whole way of the wick thing. We're back where like, you know, fire lights made it so you didn't lose any sanity at all. Everybody remember those wonderful times of phasmophobia, the golden age. You had a, you had a candle right next to you and you never lost any sanity. Those were good times, but OP times too. So I get it. But yeah, more light is always a good thing. I always enjoy having more light in dark areas. Headgear. We'll be adding an additional key bonding for toggling on and off your headgear slot. As many players have expressed, the current method isn't ideal. It's not. If you have a flashlight in your inventory and you have a headgear on, having it to be the same button to turn things on and off is not ideal. So I think being able to have it to be something else, anything else that's not being utilized will be a lot better. And it's going to be able to make sure that you don't accidentally turn something on when you're trying to hide for a hunt. Realize you have something on still, some sort of light source, and die to the ghost. It's probably caused a lot of issues. And I know a lot of players have expressed inside the Phasmo Discord that they're having a hard time turning on their headgear at all. I don't know if it's that they're not realizing that you have to hold the button down, or if they're having some sort of overlapping key binding issue. I'm not sure. But I've noticed there's a lot of bug reports they do get, so maybe this will fix that entirely for anybody experiencing that issue. All three tiers of headgear will have new sound play when you're when being interfered with by the ghost to let players know they should turn it off during hunts. That's that's great. How many people have ran into a hiding spot with tier two headgear on or tier one for that matter, not realizing it was on and then died and didn't realize until last minute? Oh my god, my headset's on. Like, now it's going to be make a little static in your ear. You're going to hear it in your headphones, some sort of disturbance, and it's going to be able to tell you, you need to turn that off right now, or you're going to have to use a smudge stick to save your life after you do it. So this that that's massively needed. I've done it myself many times, and it stinks. It's a really dumb way to die. Dumb ways to die. You you know how it is. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a massive improvement. Tier three night vision doesn't currently have any paranormal interference, so we'll be adding some of that to reduce its effectiveness during hunts and keep it on par with other equipment. I'm gonna be honest. This is not something that I've experienced a lot because I don't use tier three headgear a lot. From a streamer perspective, I find it very odd to have all of my viewers watch in a green background. I don't know. You guys can let me know in the chat if you like the green or not, but I always feel very bad for making you all look at a green screen, literally. <laughs> like, I just, I don't know. So I used, I used tier two instead. So this isn't something that impacts me, but to anybody else out there using night vision, I'm sure that it's going to be a little shittier because when you're trying to see the ghost and you're trying to get a photo of it with your night vision on, it's going to be harder because your night vision is going to be blinking. But it does make sense to keep it on par with everything else. And there's no reason to not have it give interference because every other little bit of electronical, electronical equipment does have interference. T3 hurts my eyes. That's the general feedback I've gotten from a lot of viewers is that the tier three just doesn't look appealing on a viewer side. Hey, tier three headgear, can't see anything. It's very blurry. But I, from my understanding from a lot of people, especially if you go to the Phasmophobia Reddit, they're like, well, the tier three headgear is more realistic to a real night vision goggle set. And I guess if that's what they're looking for, then they nailed it. But I, I have never worn night vision goggles in real life, so I couldn't tell you. I'm not a Navy SEAL, I'm just a potato. Motion sensor, T3 truck map indicator, will be changed to be more accurate and show when it's detecting clearer, which is great. A lot of the times you're not really aware that your tier three even got motion sensor done until you look in your journal and you say, oh, the motion sector motion sensor objective is completed. There's not a whole lot of indicators happening there. Now you're going to be able to see it inside the map, inside the truck to be able to know when it walked through that sensor. Right. Parabolic changes aid hearing impaired users will make the red LED light on the side of the T1 parabolic flash when it picks up a sound. 
That's really, really great. I think anything that a developer can do to help with accessibility is always a great thing. There's never going to be a downside to helping a player that may have some issues being able to see something or hear something, do all the things you possibly can. And so I think the idea of having it flash on the side is going to even help me. It's going to help me a lot, too, to know that, oh, my God, was that was the ambient sound that I heard? Was that something I heard in my background of my house? Was it in game? So that is a very good change. I like that a lot. Photo camera tier two will receive a slight buff to photo taking speed, which is actually rather refreshing because sometimes you want to go ahead and you want to take a second photo after you just took a first photo and you can't because it's got that delayed time between it. So now it'll be a little bit faster to be able to rapid fire off different cameras, different photos. So that's good. We'll be fixing for the final time the oversight of taking the ghost photo with a full book. Pesky haunted cameras. This one sucks. This is going to hurt real bad because I take full advantage of this every chance I possibly get. So I make sure that I don't ruin my perfect game. This is going to make it so if you have a full book of photos, you will not be able to get the ghost photo at that point. If you haven't gotten the ghost photo objective and you have a full journal, there goes your perfect game no matter what. It's gone. And they've tried to tackle, tackle this a couple times. Somebody's shit into it. Somebody doesn't like that at all. Somebody just fought it all over that line. And I agree with you. Um, it sucks. Until they are able to implement the new photo camera system where you're able to delete a photo that wasn't good, I don't want this anywhere near the game because it's going to ruin more perfect games than anything else. It's going to suck. You're going to try to take a photo of a ghost and it's going to disappear and the ghost event's going to end early and you're going to be sitting there like, well, I just filled up my journal with nothing. And th that's it. So, yeah, I, I don't like that at all. I hope it doesn't happen, but it's here. So I'm assuming it is going to happen. There are still some bugs with photos, but with the major photo overhaul coming soon, a lot of that will be fixed as byproduct. However, we're still looking into increasing the consistency of photo taking. So this is just what I was talking about right now, the photo overhaul. In my opinion, if you want this, do this first. Do that first. Do the overhaul before you mess with the ghost photo and the ability to do it during a full journal. That's my personal opinion. Don't mess with anything until you perfected other things that's going to go hand in hand with it. And don't screw us over. Exactly. Sanity medication will be speeding up sanity restoration effects for T2 to make the upgrade more worthwhile. I love that. I love that a lot. I think that tier two doesn't restore enough sanity. So getting to restore a little bit more is going to help a lot of players out, especially newer players who rely on sanity to make sure the ghost never hunts them because they don't want to die. And they don't want to lose the little bit of money they do have. Be able to help out those players. Sound sensor will like to add a uh, mute button to each sensor in the truck so you can concentrate on watching dots on the monitor in a safety and safety and silence. So you're going to have the opportunity when using sound sensors to mute them in the truck so you don't have to listen to everything happening in the location during a hunt. That is good. Sometimes a little bit too much noise in the van if you set up and use your sound sensors. Though I will say this right now. I am very shocked at how many people never use sound sensors in larger maps. I thought that was going to be like a meta. I thought people were going to do that for sure. But instead, they, they just don't. And I guess that's not a good or bad thing. Like, it's just your personal preference. But I like to use them. I think they're cool. I think they added a good, a good layer to the game. Especially if I don't want to waste my sanity walking around there alone. I don't even buy sound sensors. Exactly, Xena. Some people don't even touch them at all. So I think there's a lot of value they need to bring to this still so that it is worthwhile for players to use because right now, maybe it doesn't make enough sense for people to use it. All right, going back here, Cursed Possessions of Monkey Paw with the most recent change to the paw affecting the Sea Ghost Wish, we're going to make the darkness effect start when the hunt starts, which is great because this change really impacted solo players like myself. If I want to go ahead and utilize the Monkey Paw to get a free ghost photo, I can't because I can't see it after I wish to see it, which doesn't make any sense. So now it's going to go ahead, give you a brief moment to take the photo, and then it's going to take your vision away. So I'm more, I'm more inclined to that. I think that's a better idea. So I hope this gets put inside of the new update. I hope it does. I hope this makes it in the cut. I will, I will note that Lavender did not mention anything about the training stuff. Shui didn't mention this. No moderator in the Discord mentioned the training stuff. So I don't know if they're going to be adding any new training things to the training grounds inside of the game this next update or if this is going to be addressed later. But it is mentioned here, and I do agree that a lot of stuff in the training tutorial 
isn't valid to current gameplay. And there's a lot of gaps too. So if you're a new player, the only way to be able to understand what's happening in the game is to find somebody on Twitch who makes content or somebody on YouTube or TikTok, etc. Anybody that's a content creator and makes content for Phasmophobia or to just learn as you go with people you play with or when you're learning from just playing the game yourself. And that's not cool. You shouldn't have to do things on the fly for a game that you get penalized when you die. Because we all know if a new player joins this game and they die like three or four times in a row, what's going to happen? They're probably going to never come back on the game ever again. So it, it's, that's, never, that's not a good thing for the community. It's not a good thing for the game. It's not a good thing for anybody. So we want to prevent that at all costs. And I think a better training ground is needed to make sure that never happens or doesn't happen as frequently as it currently is. Because I don't know about all of you, but I still do engage with public lobbies. And I can tell you whenever I engage with a new player who just started Phasmophobia, they are really unsure what's going on. <laughs> Unless they've already watched Twitch or they've already watched some videos or some content creator, you know, making stuff for the game. They have no idea what's happening. And they're just kind of being thrown into the fire, essentially. And we want to be able to correct that as much as possible because everybody should be having a good time when they're playing a game. That's why we all game. We all game to have a good time. So that is going to wrap up the preview for this upcoming update. So again, new voice system, new voice activation to go towards being able to release the console update. Then we have the Ascension, uh, the Ascension equipment updates. Everything we just went over here should be in that patch. And then obviously Point Hope Lighthouse, which will not be an outdoor map. It'll be an indoor map. The ghosts will only be able to spawn inside. It'll be a medium to large side map, probably towards the large side. And it's not going to be a large map width wise. It's going to be a large map vertical going straight up in the air, which should be very, very interesting when testing certain ghost types. For example, how are we going to test for a Yuri? How many doors is inside of a lighthouse? How are you going to get a Yuri door slam if the ghost is somewhere like just on some random platform that has no doors whatsoever? We're only going to be able to answer those questions next week when the update gets released. So thank you guys so much for being here, hanging out with me during this update. I'm super hyped for it. There's so many more things again coming on the Trello. We'll just kind of we'll kick back real quick here. Going back to the Trello board, there's so much more coming to this game. Objective reworks. The whole roadmap we talked about early 2024. Horror 2.0, making the game more themed on horror again. New content drops as far as new maps, new ghosts, etc. Progression overhaul on the way that everything feels and the way that you level up. And then obviously photo reworks, which we've discussed. CCTV reworks, the way that you're able to see stuff inside through the cameras. And then last but not least, character customization. Something we've all been waiting for for a long time which is going to be the reason you want to prestige at all. Character customizations are going to be unlocked based on what level your prestige is. So if you're a higher prestige, you're going to have better customizations to unlock. So this is all coming together and leading up to the 1.0 release, in which hopefully they continue to keep developing the game, at least the capacity of adding more ghosts over time and more maps. So a lot of new stuff coming the way. I know we took a lot of time diving into this. I hope you found it as valuable. So thank you so much for watching. And we'll catch you all next week for the new Phasmophobia update.